Hey guys, this is the Cosmic Panel, and we want to wish you a very happy Valentine's Day. Uh, we know that you guys are going out, uh, going out on dates, uh, having fun with your significant others, and really enjoying uh, this day, basically, that is dedicated to your love. So what's a better way to celebrate that than to ha- watch the premiere of Madam Web, the hit movie from the Spum Sony Pictures universe of Marvel movies? You... Uh, Watch Madam Web today. You get to see Sydney Sweeney, who has been in multiple rom coms. You get to see Dakota Johnson, who is a Nepo baby. And you get to see characters that you don't give a fuck about uh, fight off against another character that you don't give a fuck about. What's a better movie to just, just turn off your brain to and be with your significant other with than Madam Web? Like Dakota Johnson herself said, it's like AI wrote your boyfriend's perfect movie, which means that it's bad because AI can't write a movie. Use uh, Madam Web powers to predict how the movie's going to go before it happens. I'm expecting $5 in box office. Not $5 million, $5. $5. And it's going to be from us too. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna be the only. We're gonna be the only one there watching. <laughs> anyway, guys, uh, moving on from that, we wanted to just remind you guys that we are sponsored by Comic Universe, uh, a local uh, comic shop at Folsom, PA, at four four six McDade Boulevard. They have five dollar trades and ten dollar hardcovers going on right now. They have an awesome collection of back issues. They got keys, graded books, toys, and new comics are always available there. Uh, highly recommend. Check out Mike and Mike over there. Uh, they run the shop, and uh, it's it's a phenomenal shop. Definitely support your local comic shops. Remember to also like and subscribe, and tell us below what comics you're pulling this week, because uh, we, we got a cool batch for, for this, uh, this Wednesday. Anyway, Elias, kick it off with your first pick. Alright. My first pick for February 14th is going to be Thunderbolts number three. Uh, second issue I did find myself enjoying. Um, you know, I was kind of skeptical because I knew that they were going to be doing um, Kingpin when he was kind of uh, in a different, you know, era. But they found a good way to, to write him as a villain, I think. And... Um, still show that he's ultimately you know a greedy businessman um so i was enjoying that issue um the uh the vault uh that they had to break into was like a fun concept a little kind of heist situation and um yeah it was an enjoyable issue and uh i think bucky you know is being written well and it was a fun little uh fun little spy thriller issue yeah, um, I will say this once. This is the only time I've enjoyed so far Black Widow having the symbiote. It felt like fine in this scenario. I was like, okay, that's cool. Like it didn't feel like overpowered as as much as it usually does. She didn't overuse it. I feel like either. So exactly, that was good. Um, but I also do like that it continued two plot lines from previous books, which was the. Uh, Double Reigns uh, Winter Soldier one shot where he talked about how <laughs> Kingpin fought him while he was sleepwalking, which was which is such a good moment. And then also uh, the relationship between him and Black Widow. I like that um, that they established in the in the last Black Widow run. So um, yeah, no, this book has been very solid. Next issue we have um, a deviation before we we deal with uh, Lavaria and Doom and Red Skull. Um, with apparently U.S. Agent uh, and another character I actually don't know. But um, U.S. Agent last time got beat up by Daredevil, so I'm actually interested to see what <laughs> what's happening with him. Yeah, um, on the previews of this book, they teased like a really huge Thunderbolts team, and it looks like we're going to get a couple more pieces this issue, and that's going to be Shang-Chi, and that's going to be uh, U.S. Agent. So I uh, I hope this is a cool issue. It's honestly kind of a shame that this is this is only a four issue because like honestly They're the not lineup given five issues this shit anymore, man. It's insane. It's it's nuts. Not even given five issues. And they had I know they had so much more to do. Yeah, you can you can tell they, they were probably gonna like tackle Red Skull and then once that was done, they were gonna do more. Mm-hmm. Like different villains. But like Red Skull is such a He's a good introduction, but like, yeah, I, I feel like Bucky. It would have been interesting if Bucky like dealt with like other characters too. Yeah. 
Um, but yeah, very. I mean, I mean, if I was to pitch another arc, I mean, go after Modok. Like that, that would be a great way to to tie it to Sentinel of Liberty. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I digress. All right, Lucas, what's your first pick for this week? So my first pick for this week is Blood Commandment number four. Uh, this is the last issue of this series, um, written and drawn by Seisman uh, Kudransky. Um, and this has been you really, work really on good. Your Russian pronunciations. Simon <laughs> Kudransky. Simon Kudransky. Kudransky. Uh, but yeah, no, um, this book has been amazing. The art alone is is, is so good. But um, Ezra uh, basically now has to choose. Uh, and it's a very difficult decision. He basically has to decide whether or not he gives his son vampire powers, but he, he basically damns his son to uh, an eternal life <laughs> without being able to see the sun, without being able to live his life. Um, or he could let him die. Those are like the two options. Um, last we saw the main villain who is the one that turned uh, Ezra into a vampire basically came in and was like, I'm giving you an ultimatum. I want you back in my, my group. I'm going to stab your son. And, and since we both, we both know that like you, they live like recluse in the woods. So like the closest town is like two hours away. So like he's like either you transform him or you let him die. Either way, I don't really care. <laughs> um, but if you if you do transform him, uh, I'll be waiting at the pier. And the last panel is literally him saying sorry to his wife, his dead wife, being like, "I I never wanted this to happen." So I'm very interested to see what's going to happen because honestly, um, yeah, this has been a really really touching father son story about them dealing with the grief of losing their their loved one their their mom and wife um while also dealing with the fact that uh the son doesn't even know his father to that degree on that level so very interesting very well written what's next up for you Elias? next up for me is going to be green lantern number eight uh the last issue um was very very solid and um we got a detailed uh retelling i guess of the conflict on uh Korrigar with Kilowog and all that and uh yeah it was a very solid issue it uh was very captivating I thought and um now in this issue um he's how's going to be going after the United Planets and hopefully um holding them accountable for their misdeeds um so I'm pretty excited to get into this issue yeah um it definitely should be interesting I mean um you can tell that this is going to be a tone shift from the covers alone. <laughs> um, but yeah, it seems like we're finally getting back into space sector stuff, uh, which I'm very excited for. And um, the cover is any, anything to hint at. Um, I'm excited to see if Kyle's in the issue. Cause like, he's just in the backup story. Oh, uh, okay. Then yeah, I guess so. Um, but Spear Walker, I mean, not Spear Walker, uh, razor being there uh, is definitely going to be interesting because um uh, I don't know if you remember who who Razor is. Um, he was from the Green Lantern animated from the show, right? Yeah. Yes. Um, and then, uh, wait, you never watched season four of Young Justice? Okay, I'm gonna spoil something. Um, sorry, but do you have uh, to though? <laughs> <laughs> Not really. Yes, I kind of. So Ron Mars <laughs> is writing this backup story with Kyle Rayner, and Dale Eaglesham is doing the art. So they're continuing this backup story trend. So that's pretty fun. And uh, yeah, this is a solid book, and I'm glad that it's uh, still continuing on. Looks like we got to fill an artist for the main story. But yeah, I'm wondering if they're going to do what they did in Young Justice to, to Razor. Uh, there you go. Uh, there, there. I'll, I'll keep that as vague as possible until this man has still not finished Young Justice. So, so it's a really cool moment. You, you really got to watch it, honestly. No. Okay. <laughs> So you see Razor becomes him. <laughs> so uh, what's your next pick, Lucas? My next pick is Kill Your Darlings, number six. Um, number five was was a short issue, what well, felt like a short issue, um, because it was mostly like drawings and, and stuff like that. But it was very, very well done. Um, but we basically got an explanation for why our main character has some influence within 
then the imaginary world, the magical land, Rose, Rose was born. So, um, the really interesting thing about the, the last issue was we, the reason why the darkness exists now is, is we realized that Rose's mom basically killed a kid and the grandmother cursed her. So, um, it's, it's, it's definitely gonna be interesting to see what this grandmother is and if she's going to turn out to be the main antagonist of the series. But yeah, so, so this issue now we're going to be, I think, coming back to, um, the actual like main story, I believe, um, it says uh, after centuries of horror, can the girl who wouldn't burn change her violent ways or will the cycle of blood and death begin anew? How is that clear? Her and the great and terrible evil connected to Rose. Um, and so far from what we understand, uh, Rose and the evil are kind of from the same moment. Uh, they, they kind of became the same thing. Um, so, Right now, the evil is is possessing her one friend that stuck around for her for so long that trusted her. Um, so, I'm I'm very interested to see what's going to happen. Um, the series has been shaping up, uh, but yeah, very excited. Yeah, I'm glad to see that this is still going strong. Six issues in, and looks like yeah. they got a lot more planned. Yeah, they got up to eight issues now. Um, so it seems like this is going to be an ongoing for the foreseeable future. Uh, which I'm excited for because honestly, well written. Um, you can tell they got grand plans for it, um, and their story is definitely going to be. Uh, 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 they say they say in the summary an epic. So I'm expect, and they're saying this is the end of Act One. So I expect this to go on for quite a bit. To be honest, cool. What's next up for you? Next up for me is going to be Blue Beetle number six. Um, this has been a very consistent Blue Beetle series. I really enjoyed the tone of this book. And um, I think that it's been just a lot of fun. This is going to be the final issue of this arc um, against the Blood Scarab. And um, yeah, a lot of great character inclusions. Um, a lot of cool politics with the Reach and all them. And um, yeah, I think this is kind of what I want out of a ongoing Jaime book and I'm glad to see that it's not getting canned at six issues um, so I'm excited to read this conclusion of this arc yeah um, it should be very interesting to say the least um, Red Scare we definitely I mean Blood Scare we've definitely gotten more of a an idea of who he is and the fact that the Scarab is kind of putting him in this predicament so yeah very interested to see what's going to happen yeah um and hopefully we got some answers on, you know, how Ted's doing. And um, we have a, a lot of characters coming back from, like, the past miniseries um, that are going to help out. And it's going to kind of be like a big team against um, against the Blood Scarab. So I'm excited. All right, Lucas. So what's your next poll going to be? My next poll is going to be The Infernals number one. Um, Ryan Parrott. I I love his fucking work. He, uh, if you don't know, basically made the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers comic the way it is. Um, he he basically was like the driving force for a lot of those those comics and a lot of those issues. So I know he knows how to write very very well. But uh, this looks like a very interesting indie book. Um, people are comparing it, saying that it's like Succession but with devil <laughs> with devils, uh, which I think is that's that's a great way to put it um so from what i can understand abe morning star the son of satan has one month to live but before he dies he, he's got to choose a successor and all of them are basically fucking evil demon hybrids and uh basically uh they whoever succeeds basically gets control of the apocalypse and uh the antichrist doesn't apparently want that to happen uh he wants to be in control so um it's going to be a very, very interesting story, to say the least. Image is really cranking out new series right now, which is always cool to see. And, uh, you know, giving writers space to do to do their thing. So that's excellent. Yeah. One in 25 incentive by Martin Simmons. Ooh, oh, that's actually kind of hype. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Wait, let me see this. Ooh, that looks good. That looks really good, actually. Damn. Yeah. But yeah, um, it looks it looks fun. It looks fun. Word. What's next up for you, Elias? Next up for me is going to be Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver number one. Uh, I'm happy to see this book uh, coming out after the uh, 
end of the Scarlet Witch series. And Steve Orlando is going to be writing this series as well. So this will be somewhat of a direct continuation. And uh, I'm always happy to see more Quicksilver. You know, we don't get a lot of Quicksilver these days. I really enjoyed him in Kenny Avengers. So I'm happy to see them sharing a book once again. Um, this is going to be uh, dealing with um, some new storylines for them. Probably some new uh, villain matchups and stuff like that. Um, but, uh, you know, Scarlet Witch, uh, I really thought was in a very consistent series. You know, it established her in one place and it gave her a purpose and a goal in life. And um, so hopefully um, they can still kind of pivot around that and, um, you know, still give her that nice HQ. And uh, Quicksilver, I'm curious what they can build out for him. Um, you know, it's important not to keep him one note and um, maybe he'll have something to say about uh, Magneto and um yeah, I'm just uh, I'm excited to get into this series and see what they have planned. Yeah, I wonder if Darcy's still going to be in the series. Um, but yeah, it, it should be very interesting either way. Um, it's kind of a shame that the the series was a mini, the original Scarlet Witch. Um, but well, this is how Marvel works. Short. Did it actually get cut short? Was it supposed to be an ongoing? Yeah, it was ten issues. Before they oh, it. okay. I don't. I don't know why I thought it was only six or five. Yeah, no, it, it was going for a minute. I don't know if maybe sales dipped or something. But this series is going to be a mini series. Um, but I think for the fall of House era, that's that's fine. And then you know, hopefully we'll we'll see where where they land at the end of this uh, once the dust settles. Yeah, definitely. All right. What is your next pick, Lucas? My next pick is the Hunger and the Dusk. Number six, um, this series continues to be one of the best uh, fantasy series I've read in a long time. Uh, G. Willow Wilson showing that she isn't just a superhero writer. She 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 knows how to write many different genres. Um, and this this series has been really good. Um, Tara, the orc princess who was was basically serving on the team as their healer, has decided to leave due to. Um, Due to the recklessness, basically, of the leader of the last men. Uh, so Cal, Cal basically almost risked everyone to to save one person. And Tara was like, now I have to heal them. I'm They're basically throwing their lives away, and you don't seem to care. And they both say harsh things, pretty brutal things. She calls him the son of a bastard, and, and she, he, he says that she's just nothing but a pampered princess and uh, it ends with her basically leaving the camp and that means the human and orc alliance is basically dead <laughs> so um, it's pretty fucked especially because like the current people that they're facing off against the skywalkers are uh, not holding back they're, they're fucking brutal as shit um, and way more powerful than either humans or orcs so um, either way the series has been great, and it seems like we're going to be getting an issue solely focused on Tara, basically traveling the road north to get back home, um, and deciding what she's going to be doing with her life now that she's la uh, she's left the the band of uh, the last men standing. By the way, that's the name of the army. By the way, is called the Last Men Standing. <laughs> okay. Nice. Yeah, just just for context for why I was saying that. <laughs> cool. Um. Yeah, I have not read this book myself, but I'm glad to hear it's strong. It's and um, apparently very good. Uh, IDW might be folding um, their business, so uh, this is the last issue of this series, and uh, a lot more issues might uh, follow their their lead. Unfortunately, a lot more titles. Oh my god! I didn't even realize this was the last issue. What the fuck? Yeah, apparently IDW is uh, having trouble business wise. Oh. Damn it. Fuck. I was really enjoying this. God damn it. Yeah. There's no way they can end this in this story. What? Yeah. <laughs> there's literally there's literally no way. The story cannot end now. <laughs> oh my god. There you go, folks. Genuine oh. reaction. Live reaction to his dream. <laughs> live re- my live reaction to that information. <laughs> Oh fucking hell. Well that 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 ruins that ruins so much. God damn there's literally no how the fuck are they gonna resolve this? 
There's literally no way they can resolve this in one <laughs> issue. <laughs> oh my god. Poor yeah. G. Willow Wilson. Yeah. She was finally... I, I, I shit you not, I 100% think this would have been Eiser nominated. Like, actually. If, yeah. if this was... If this... If it got to fucking finish its story, yeah. God, yeah. that hurts. That hurts. Yeah. Anyway, what's your fucking top pick? <laughs> Welcome to the comic industry, everyone. My top pick for this week is going to be Fall of the House of X number two. I'm not caught up on my X-Men books. So all I'm going to say is the last issue of Fall was very good. And this next issue is going to have Polaris Spring nowhere to Earth, which is a pretty fucking insane uh, battle strategy. Yeah, what? And, uh, Kid Brew <laughs> is the leader of the brood, uh, you know, at least the, the good brood. And um, they're going to help fight this battle. So... This is a uh, pretty hype, and um, hopefully we will get some, you know, more dialogue out of this issue. But um, I'm not mad if this moves the action along. You know, it's just a really, really fun book, and um, I'm always hyped to get another issue. Yeah, um, I'm just wondering if this is gonna fuck up everyone else's plans because, like, Tony already has his own plan going. So, <laughs> well, I think everyone's just supposed to fire on all sides now, and Tony's just, you know, trying to build his shit in the background yeah everyone is just striking at once now well i just i don't well because you read the last x-men right not not the latest one but the one before that the one with where where talon high evolutionary yeah yes so like they said that tony was was gonna send his ships to like uh to uh australia i'm just wondering how that's gonna interfere with this because a giant floating head fucking coming out of the sky (laughs) Is gonna be <laughs> well. It's a it's a decoy though, right? The the Iron Man, the Australian Outback thing. True, true. So he should be able to um, have that happen with without using too many resources. True. Yeah. Either way, yeah, definitely gonna be fucking interesting. Yeah. All right, Lucas. What is gonna be your final pick for this week? So my final pick is gonna be Vengeance of Moon Knight number two. Um, for last issue was really really good. Um, honestly, I, I told this to Elias. I think last issue should have been part of the end of the last Moon Knight uh, book. But I'm very excited to see what's going to happen. This new Moon Knight seems to be way more well vengeful. I guess is the better <laughs> best w- word to put. Um, but we're going to be finally getting uh, Buddier versus this new Moon Knight, and I'm interested to see what's going to happen. Um, I. Don't know how Badir is going to face off against him, if he's going to like go all out, or if he's going to hold it back. Um, we don't even know if this is Mark. Um, but either way, um, the Midnight Mission and Hunter's Moon are uh, are going to have to deal with this threat now. Um, and it should be very interesting. I'm, I'm actually really excited to see what's going to happen. Yeah, the last issue just picked up right where the series last series ended, which is always what I want to see um, when, you know, they're rebooting stuff so quickly. Um, so this has just been super solid and I'm really, really excited to see it continue. You know, um, I can't get enough of Alessandro on Moon Knight. This is just uh, business as usual and um, with a new twist. So very excited to get into this issue. Yeah, I love that he was also like, get the fuck out of my 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 church. <laughs> it was like, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty nuts. I'm very curious to find out how he has come back. Yeah. Also, if this is a new Moon Knight, um, I wonder if he has Mark's memories because, like, that's how the Moon Knight Moon Knights are supposed to work. Yeah, they're like supposed to have like an Avatar State almost situation where like they have all the skills and experiences. So I'm wondering if if he's going to have that for Mark, or if yeah. Mark just completely skipped skipped out because of the three personalities. I think right now they're 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 pushing the idea that this is Mark come back and something's wrong, um, but it'll be. Interesting to see how they they pan it all out. Yeah, I I think this is going to result probably like ending probably in them having the free conchu. Genuinely, I really hope they do that arc. Yeah, yeah it should be interesting. Uh, them breaking into Asgard would be really interesting to say the least. But it would definitely yeah. call the attention of everyone. <laughs> so yeah. it would be a a last straw type of situation. Mm-hmm. 
So yeah, either way, very excited. All right. Well, this has been our polls for February 14th. Thank you guys for tuning in. Like, comment, all that stuff we said at the beginning. Thank you, Comic Universe, for sponsoring this series. And as always, we'll see you guys next time. Madam Web. <laughs> Don't forget to Madam Web. <laughs>